answer. Because you are that, you are capable. You are gifted and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay to just be you. The world awaits to receive you. Experience a global adventure with our Mineral Wash Cut-Off Sleeve T-Shirt, featuring a unique design inspired by cultures worldwide. Perfect for any occasion. Add it to your wardrobe today and join us on this epic world tour. All right, all right, all right. Good myself on the screen first i want to shout out shout out shout out to our sponsors today shoe pound customs also known as pound customs definitely check them out we have their website on the page right now we're going to let me drop the link let me drop the link for you guys i'm over here playing shout out to shoe pound um, doing a lot of customizing. So if you're into customized clothes, as far as jeans, shirts, if you're exclusive and you want to be one of five people in the whole world to have a Pacific design, this is definitely the brand for you. So let, let me let me just put that commercial. We're going to go through their website a little bit because I'm going to have to shout out the sponsors first. Okay. Because that's where all the support comes from, from the beginning, okay? So check them out. Experience a global adventure with our Mineral Wash Cut-Off Sleeve T-Shirt. Featuring a unique design inspired by cultures worldwide. Perfect for any occasion. Add it to your wardrobe today and join us on this epic world tour. Our next episode, we're moving on to more local news, and I'm going to have to give y'all an update. Yes, I'm going to give y'all an update. This update is going to be about what's going on in Haiti. Um, if people are concerned, I am, you know, I am a first generation from Haiti, born in New York, but my first generation, you know, they, my people came over on the boat. So... With that goes to say, there is a narrative that's going on, and I want to talk about it a little bit. It's a three-minute video, and, you know, just got an inside perspective of what was going on, and I wanted to share it because I'm like, oh, it's a little, oh, it's a little, it's going down. It's going down to Haiti. This is when you have people that don't play for their land, Okay. So it's a, it's a narrative that's being spun that um, basically the gangs are taking over Haiti. And I'm not saying that it's not something going on weird, but uh, the people in Haiti are fighting for their rights. OK, so here is an update. And welcome to The Factor Uncensored, mind-blowing story out of Haiti tonight. Tensions between suspected gang members and everyday citizens of Haiti have reached a critical boiling point. Police in, in Port-au-Prince say at least 10 of those gang members, and now we're hearing more than a dozen of those gang members, were killed by people living in the area. And get this, those gang members were beaten, burned alive in the streets on Monday. This comes after days of fighting between alleged gang members and security agents. Gangs have been growing since the assassination of President Jovenel Moise in 2021. They controlled an estimated 80% of Port-au-Prince area. 
Joining me to talk about this here on The Factor on Censor tonight, co-founder and president of Houston Haitians United, Sledge Leonidas, and a member of the group, Shirley Leno. Glad to have you all here on The Factor on Censor. It's just mind-blowing. And what we didn't say there was it began Monday morning when the gangs were going door-to-door, according to reports, trying to take advantage of the citizens mm -hmm. there. And then the citizens turned the tables once the police were brought in. Your thoughts on this, Shirley? Well, first off, thank you, Isaiah, for having us um, on the show. It's always yeah, a pleasure uh, to be here. <sighs> I will say that um, given the dynamics of the country of Haiti and the conditions being that President uh, Jovenel Moïse was assassinated, the current conditions of our country is in turmoil. Mm -hmm. And um, let's be realistic here. Uh, President Jovenel Moise, before his assassination, he was trying to push the referendum. Um, and part of the referendum um, uh, was to allow military and civic service uh, for government protection for mm -hmm. the people. Now, being that that is not in place, now you have a situation where uh, the community is exposed. Um, there's no type of protection. Um, I know uh, currently the Prime Minister um, Henry is trying to put some things into place, but at this time, we, we just don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, Sledge, feel free to chime in. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm going to chime in right now. So this is my breakdown. I'm going to just do a little breakdown of what's going on in Haiti. As far as what she said, post the president being taken out, this is not the first president that has been taken out of Haiti. Allegedly, this president who was taking out that she's talking about, the people believe that that president was replaced during the time a little bit after the earthquake. He was the replacement. We had um, another president in Haiti before I forgot his name, before the earthquake, because we're going to do our documentary on this and give you more details. But that president was ran out, okay? And his assistant was pushed out of the position and was not able to handle um, some of the, the monies or anything dealing with what was coming in for the earthquake. This is when we knew that something was happening in Haiti. Now, I'm telling you from being a first generation and having family out there in the perspective, okay? So at that time, when they started to say, okay, we have someone else being put into a president position, which the Haitian people feel is a coup. It was a coup from allegedly other countries and i'm not going to say who allegedly okay so you have the people here that's now having issues because we've been having issues in haiti but it's escalating because the replacement president who got assassinated just recently because whatever was the setup he was doing a lot of restriction on the gas of what will go out he was the gas prices was 25 dollars a gallon in haitian money all types of stuff ridiculous on top of they was um they don't have access to like 24 hours a day unless you have a generator and solar panels so they turn off the lights they keep the lights on like two o'clock two hours in the morning two hours at night under this new president okay okay and this has been happening and getting worse so the people don't have access to the gas like they need to do travel do the things they do you have a striving community community that's trying to strive and build their own economy okay now you got to understand that the social pressures that is starting to intertwine into haiti just like many other states I mean, countries, just keep that information I just told you. We, other countries are influenced by gangs. Usually, and I'm not going to say it's only gangs in America, but what I can say, that gangs stand for poverty. And a lot of gangs that I uh, have encountered, even though they came from other countries, they established gangs here to survive, allegedly picking up more of the gang mentality in America and organized crime. You learn a lot in America. So you get these people coming from other countries, not just Haiti, 
Peru, Mexico, all types of places. And they get sent back after they do these crimes. Not only did they do the crimes, learn the crimes, they served the time here, learn more stuff. And then they go back to their country. So they have a social influence that they're bringing back to their countries, which starts to fuel, I'm independent, the, the government messed up. You know, you have criminals that's coming back, starting enterprises that has still has connections to America. So keep that in mind. You see the people on the screen. They got regular clothes on like you and me. That's why I say, go ahead and go to Haiti and think that you're going to see people running around looking like a third world country. It looked like a third world country, but they dress, they got fashion. They have been impressed with the American way of living and also that innate spirit that we have of freedom and taking what's ours. So there has been a history of the Haitian community in, in Haiti over time that coups were against the president from the people. So when she says she don't understand what happened, I'm breaking down some of what all of that. So then you have the gangs who are like, all right, we're we, we trying to get to America. We're trying to do our thing. We're trying to make money. They got Instagram. They got TikTok. They're being socially influenced. They're feeling greed. They're doing Somehow they got guns there. And not saying that isn't a, a Haiti don't make guns or manufacture, but a lot of the guns come in from other countries. Okay. And these things are fueling this. Okay. So you have the gangs mixed up in the head, all of that going on. Poverty, I mean money, you know. We have an older generation that's saying, no, don't do this. Pray. Da, da, da. They're like, get out of here. This, that, and third. I'm this. I'm trying to get to America. I'm telling you, I'm talking to Haitian people. I got Haitian family that's there, cousins that's my age, that's younger. This is the feeling. Okay? So if y'all want to know what's going on with Haiti. So now you got some of these gangs who are so egocentric that they forgot who they're dealing with. They're dealing with their own people. They dealing with Haitian people. And one thing Haitian people, we don't do, we don't take stuff laying down on the ground and we don't take disrespect from our young. We don't play no game. So you, if you think a president can be allegedly dragged through the ground by a truck, it happened years ago. It's not, not bragging, but don't play with corruption. So you got adults, elders who's home, Minding their business, they suffering just like them, but they, they what could they do? So you had them going thinking that they're gonna terrorize. So I call my grandma and I said, Grandma, what's going on? Because I already talked to her about what was going on in Haiti because she went to Haiti. I'm like, what's going on? You want to go out there? There's a lot going on. Oh, there's nothing going on by me. This, that, and third is only going on in certain places. She's keeping, you know, her ear to it. So I said, Grandma, what's going on with this and the bodies? And she said, oh, oh, they're them no good. Oh, they think they're going to come and they're going to do something to the people. I said, ho, 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 oh, Grandma, what the hell's going on? What do you mean? And she wrapped up. My grandma, 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 let's see, she's like, you know where I get it from. She for justice. I said, what? Huh? Oh, Yeah. They thought they was going to be stupid going to people's houses. They trapped themselves. They trapped themselves. So I don't know. We're going to listen a little bit more of what actually happened. But they trapped themselves. They trapped themselves by going into these people's community and thought they was going to strong arm these people. And it didn't happen. Okay? So I'm going to just tell you, this is the tribe of Levi. We have issues with each other, too. And we have issues with gangs. We have issues, you know, but the elders standing up. That's what I'm telling you. We stand up. We got, we correct our young. So it actually, the young is going and tormenting the older people. Allegedly. Yeah, sure. Sure. Um, the prime minister, Ariel Henry, uh, is currently running and governing the country. Um, they're supposed to have elections sometimes in 2024, mm -hmm. um, April, July, sometime. 
Uh, most of most of the senators and uh, government officials have their terms have lapsed. Um, and so basically he's running the country um, somewhat of a uh, dictatorship, you. if you for lack of better terms. Now, the gang leaders that have access to these weapons, um, first of all, Haiti does not manufacture any weapons. Mm -hmm. um, so there has to be port of entry for that. Most that of it is coming out of the U.S. from Miami uh, being shipped there to the country. Uh, most of these gang members, they're poor citizens of the country that are left to fend for themselves uh, due to lack of jobs and infrastructure. But do you the think that capital. gives them a right to take advantage of other people in the country, other citizens who are not involved that's in the violence? No, absolutely no, not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. What I wanted to touch on was bringing us back to where things started, to mm -hmm. where they are now and to bring things full circle. Now, the gangs are uh, controlling the country, uh, uh, specifically Port-au-Prince, because there's different departments of Haiti and people are still going there, traveling safely, but in Port-au-Prince is where most of the turmoil is happening. I would say uh, at least a good 90% of the turmoil is there in the capital now the local residents that are there they're tired they're tired of the unrest they're tired of the uh, uh the haitian government not being able to respond and provide security for them and um because of this bickering the police and the local gangs are interacting within with each other violently to where there were police officers that were uh slain and now these uh, gang members that were captured, they were um, traveling and they had arms in the van and there was a blockade that the, uh, the local police had set up um, for security purposes and checkpoints. And they uh, noticed these, um, uh, these, these gang bandits. And so they uh, took them and arrested them. And they, uh, I, there's a, a, a moment where they do not know how these people got free to the public mm -hmm. when they got a hold of but them. Let, let's talk about what we see. They got now, back out. Which is just mind blowing that citizens, some citizens, they call them vigilantes, have, ri have uh, they rise up and then they we, we take wait. matters into we their own hands. When you guys hear about that, that means that it is at wits end there. Absolutely. And to our, you We've know, your point it. earlier and, you know, given the timeline and history, when you are in a country where there's no precedent, when there's no uh, government officials who are ensuring that the safety is there, as a citizen, you are in a, a position where, okay, I need to defend. I need to make sure that I am safe. Now, I will add that what is going on, that is not okay. No. Right? Yeah, absolutely. That not. is not okay. Mm -hmm. But do you get that when you have hopelessness and no one to provide the security that you expect under the Constitution? Well, it is our hope that uh, Prime Minister Henry um, continues to push the referendum, the 2021 constitutional referendum that President Jovenel was going to put in place, which included military and civic service to protect the citizens of Haiti. I but to let add, you know, that yeah. would take a while to get there. Mm -hmm. What would you tell the... My thing is, why do you need to get civil service from outside of the country when you have people here in the country that could kick ass? Once you pay your own people instead of trying to going out, and that's the problem, that's the corruption, and that's what Haitian people feel like the government try to outsource. You're not giving the people in Haiti jobs, you're not training them, and it's all this money, and they're the one that has suffered all the devastation. So this memorandum that the gentleman who passed away, who not yeah passed away, the last president, um, the people didn't support him because of his ways of doing things. The money is being shunted out. This is the same thing that's happening in the United States, allegedly, where you are in everybody else's business and not focus on yours and a lot of outsourcing. Where is the jobs that's being created for Americans? That's the same thing that the Haitians feel. So not justifying anything. I'm just giving you a breakdown of what's actually happening in Haiti from an inside perspective, because there are some things that, you know, that the news don't bring up. Answer, because you are that, you are capable.
You are gifted and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay to just be. The world awaits to receive you. The real estate market often seems like a distant world where only an elite of experts is successful. In a time of so much uncertainty in the air and bad news, realist investing can seem intimidating. But today, I want to tell you that if you make the right decision today, you can enter the real estate market from the back door. Bad credit record? No credit at all. Do you dread the idea of having a home loan? Do you dream of owning investment properties? You are in the right place and right time because we have created a program which is a tax lien and deed investment online course of only 14 hours. This course is specially designed for people like you who have big dreams. You will learn at your own pace and everything from your home computer. This is your chance. Join our membership for $19.99 a year. What are you waiting for? Visit our website primetimehomebuyerbuyback.org and sign up today for course access.